Imagine this, it's peak sales season. Thousands of customers flood our e-commerce platform, searching for the perfect product. But instead of seamless browsing, the system slows down, search queries take forever, and the database is struggling under the weight. Why? Because some of our product searches are still bypassing Elasticsearch and hitting the database directly. This isn't just a minor inconvenience. It's a ticking time bomb. A slowdown here means lost sales, frustrated customers, and a bad reputation. So today, we are diving deep into one of the biggest challenges in our e-commerce system, search performance. More specifically, how our entity attribute value model is contributing to these bottlenecks and how we can fix it. Let me quickly introduce the key players. Luca, the leader of the payment team, always pushing for improvements. And myself, Pop, the architect behind the scenes. Now, without further ado, let's kick off our story by exploring the journey of a search query first. Imagine user types in wireless headphones. The request first lands at our API gateway, which acts as the traffic director. It validates the request, ensures authentication, and then forwards it to the search service. The search service is where the things get interesting. Instead of querying the product database directly, it first checks Elasticsearch, our primary search engine. Elasticsearch is optimized for fast lookups thanks to its powerful indexing, ensuring near instantaneous search results. But where does Elasticsearch get its data? Our product CMS service is the source of truth for all the product details. Anytime a product is added, updated or removed, the product CMS updates the product database. However, since Elasticsearch doesn't automatically know about these changes, we rely on Kafka to bridge the gap. Through Kafka's product updated topic, every product change triggers an event. The search service listens for these updates, processes them, and updates the relevant product indexes in Elasticsearch. This ensures that search results stay fresh and reflect the latest product information. So every time a user searches, we are not putting a necessary load on the product database. Instead, we pull results straight from Elasticsearch. And whenever a product changes, Kafka makes sure those updates flow into Elasticsearch automatically. But the database is struggling during peak traffic because some queries are bypassing Elasticsearch and hitting the database directly. That's surprising. I thought with Elasticsearch and our asynchronous Kafka updates, we'd be more resilient during these spikes. What's causing the strain? It comes down to how we handle special category attributes. We expected these attributes to be used only occasionally, so we didn't index them in Elasticsearch. Instead, we store them separately in an entity attribute value model, which prevents the product table from becoming cluttered with hundreds of columns. The problem, some of these attributes are queried just often enough, especially during peak sales events, that they are causing a significant load on the database. I see the problem now. Without those attributes indexed, every time someone runs a specific search, especially during high traffic periods, the database takes the hit. 
The entity attribute value model gives us flexibility, but it's proving to be a bottleneck. Exactly, the entity attribute value model works well for managing highly dynamic product attributes without requiring constant schema changes. But when those attributes aren't indexed in Elasticsearch, our database ends up doing the heavy lifting when filtering or searching for these properties. And that's what's putting our system under stress. But we can't just offload everything onto Elasticsearch. Indexing the entire product database could put a significant strain on the Elasticsearch cluster, especially with dynamic schemas like our special entity attribute value attributes. Elasticsearch isn't designed to handle an ever-growing set of fields efficiently. It can lead to mapping explosions, increased indexing overhead, and slower queries. That's exactly why we've tried to maintain a balance. What's your take, Luca? Is there anything we can do to ease the load without jeopardizing the system? You are right to be cautious, but I think we are underutilizing Elasticsearch's full potential. While a quick fix might not be realistic, the most effective long-term solution would be to transition our product data to unstructured JSON in a NoSQL database. This would allow us to index complete product documents directly in Elasticsearch, enabling us to fully leverage its search capabilities without overloading the system. By indexing the entire document, we can streamline searches and significantly improve performance, even under peak loads. Wow, that would be a massive overhaul, Luca. This isn't a simple or quick fix. We are talking about significant changes across the board. The impact would be substantial. One, database migration. Switching to unstructured JSON data would necessitate a complete redesign of a current database schema. This could introduce complexities in data management, retrieval, and integrity. Two, product CMS rewrite. A product CMS service would need an extensive rewrite. It's currently structured to handle well-defined data models. Adapting it to work with unstructured JSON means rethinking how we manage, store, and retrieve product data, potentially adding layers of abstraction that might affect performance. Free search service overhaul. The search service would require a complete revamp to accommodate the indexing and querying of unstructured JSON documents within the Elasticsearch cluster. This could impact the efficiency and accuracy of search results, given the dynamic nature of unstructured data. But I do understand your point, Luca. This could very well be the best way to address the root of the problem providing a sustainable solution without needing constant workarounds. But it might take us a long time to get there. And I'm not sure if the business would easily approve it or be willing to invest so much into it. You know how they are, always loving quick fixes and not really bothered by the technical debt they sometimes impose by rushing for solutions. Exactly, that's why I came to your office. We've got to change something. The system isn't stable anymore. And just piling more stuff onto it while finding quick and dirty solutions isn't helping. Quite opposite, actually. It's dragging us down. We are patching holes instead of building something that can actually weather the storm. 
Every time we take a shortcut, we add another layer of complexity and the cracks are starting to show. I hear you, Luca. It's the vicious cycle. The more we delay addressing the root issues, the more fragile the system becomes. But convincing the business to take a step back and invest in a long-term solution, that's going to be a tough sell. We need to make them see the bigger picture. If we don't take action now, the cost of maintenance, firefighting and potential downtime will only increase. We've got to shift the narrative from quick fixes to sustainable growth. If we can present a clear plan that shows not just the technical benefits, but also the long-term business value, we might have a shot. You are right. We need to approach this strategically. But let me ask you this, Luca. Would you still be willing to consider another approach to deal with this database overloading? I have a feeling we need to stabilize the current state somehow, quickly, so you don't have to spend more sleepless nights. Then we can monitor the situation and see how it goes. We could gradually start working on convincing the business to migrate to NoSQL and fix the problem permanently. But for now, let's focus on a temporary solution that buys us time without compromising the system further. What do you think? I get where you're coming from, Pop. The idea of a quick fix is tempting, especially considering the pressure we are under. But I'm worried that another temporary patch might just delay the inevitable and make the final transition even more painful. However, if we can find a way to stabilize things without adding more complexity or creating new issues down the line, I'm open to it. I completely understand. The last thing we want is to kick the can down the road. But I've been thinking, what if we take a layered approach? First, we could reduce the load on our primary database by caching some of the less frequently accessed entity attribute value product attributes that aren't part of the main product table. This won't solve everything, but it might relieve enough pressure to get us through the next few months without incident. Caching could definitely ease the load. But how do we handle the fact that some attributes aren't even indexed in Elasticsearch? That's what's causing these queries to hit the database in the first place. Good point. We should also expand our Elasticsearch indexing to cover those missing entity attribute value attributes, especially the ones that are queried more frequently during peak traffic. This way, we are not only caching the less critical data, but also making sure the more important data is quickly retrievable without hammering the database. So you are suggesting we cache the rarely accessed attributes and at the same time enhance our elastic search to handle the more critical queries. That could work. It's like a dual approach to tackle both ends of the spectrum. Exactly. And to further optimize, we could consider partitioning the product attribute table by separating frequently accessed data from the rest we could ensure that our most critical queries are handled more efficiently, reducing the chances of bottlenecks during high traffic periods. Partitioning, caching, and expanding Elasticsearch, I like it. These aren't massive changes, but they could give us the breathing room we need. And while we stabilize our current system, we could start laying the ground for that 
no SQL migration we talked about. Slowly building our case to the business. Right, this way we are not just putting a band-aid on the problem. We are setting up a series of improvements that will support the system's growth and give us more time to make the larger changes when the business is ready to invest. Let's start sketching out this plan in more detail and see how quickly we can get these improvements in place. This is how a current index structure looks. Simple, but missing those category-specific attributes that get more hits during peak traffic. Right, and that forces the system to query the database directly when those attributes are needed. Exactly, and here is the updated structure. With this attributes array, Elasticsearch can handle these queries directly. Right, we have now indexed the attributes that get more hits during peak traffic, so searches for those won't hit the database anymore. Exactly, and for the less frequently queried attributes, we've added this cache. The cache stores rarely queried attributes temporarily to reduce the database load. And we've connected it to the Kafka product updated topic. So the cache stays in sync with product changes. Exactly, the cache uses a time to live mechanism to clean itself automatically after a set period, preventing stale data from sticking around. All right, that's our plan for improving search performance and easing the database load. And that wraps up this video. But there is still one more challenge ahead, inventory management. And that's exactly what we will tackle in the next video.